Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. As inflation soars to record highs, older Americans are facing an unprecedented cost of living crisis. Mary Padula never thought she would need help paying for groceries just four years after retirement. I do not have the money to buy what I need. Now she depends on donations from a local senior center as the rising cost of almost everything eats away at what she can afford on a social security check. I wish I was still working again because it's so hard to keep going on the way I'm going on. With inflation at a 40-year high, millions of older Americans are feeling that same strain. Many who live on fixed incomes have been forced to cut back. They have less buying power, so that you're really going to have to watch your pennies a little more. You're going to have to do some budgeting if you're on a uh, income that does not change that much. The Elder Index, which measures the economic security of older adults, estimates half of seniors who live alone already struggle to cover the basics. You're unable to maintain the standard of living. For those who rely solely on Social Security, it's a tougher situation. Even after a 5.9% cost of living adjustment this year, the average monthly benefit is only about $1,600. By January, inflation had already increased 2% faster or 2% more than the amount of our COLA. Experts predict a larger cost of living adjustment in 2023. Until then, they say some seniors will take on more debt and many will seek assistance for the first time, doing what they can to get by. Because there's so many people going the same way that you are. Don't ever, ever, ever be ashamed. Now, the U.S. Census reports about 10% of seniors are already living below the poverty line as inflation continues to make that problem worse. What we could see as a result is a rapid rise in senior homelessness. In Cleveland, Stephen Gowen, Fox News. The New York State Senate is considering legislation for a temporary commission to investigate COVID-related deaths at nursing homes in the state. The independent commission will review an audit from the state comptroller's office. The bill already passed the Health Committee and is now with the Finance Committee before heading to a floor vote by the full Senate. Thousands of New York elders died in nursing homes during the early months of the pandemic. A Steuben County legislator has said he won't step down after accepting a plea deal. Stephen Mayo, a courting Democrat, was charged with soliciting a prostitute in a larger sex trafficking investigation. He's scheduled for sentencing in June and faces three years of probation as part of the plea deal. Members of both parties have called for Mayo to resign. His current term runs to the end of 2023. A Steuben County candidate gets the boot from the ballot after the County Board of Elections says hundreds of petition signatures were not valid. A candidate needs to get at least a thousand signatures to get on the ballot. And the board determined Mark Rousseau, who was running for county coroner, did not have enough. Rousseau's opponent, Corning City Police Chief Jess Spaulding, challenged the signatures. The Board of Elections found that nearly 300 had problems, dropping Rousseau below the threshold to make the ballot. The U.S. Post Office is being sued over environmental concerns as the agency plans to add more than 100,000 delivery trucks to its fleet. 16 states and two top environmental activist groups are trying to block the purchase of nearly 150,000 gas-powered trucks over the next decade. They claim the purchases of fossil fuel-powered delivery vehicles will cause environmental harm for decades to come. The lawsuit, filed in New York and California, asks judges to order a more thorough environmental review before the Postal Service moves forward with the Next Generation Delivery Vehicle Program. Environmental groups are urging the Postal Service to buy more electric delivery vehicles instead. President Biden unveiling a new proposal that would extend U.S. aid for Ukraine. The new $33 billion request comes as do fears that the war could drag on. Madeline Rivera has more from Washington. In his latest appeal to Congress, President Biden is stressing the need to provide more aid for Ukraine. So we need to contribute arms, funding, ammunition, and the economic support to make their courage and sacrifice have purpose so they can continue this fight and do what they're doing. It's critical this funding gets approved and approved as quickly as possible. 
After announcing a $1.3 billion security and economic package last week, the president warned the nearly $14 billion assistance package Congress approved for Ukraine last month has been nearly exhausted. His request comes at a pivotal moment as Russia steps up its offensive in the east, pounding the Ukrainian defensive lines with no end in sight. It's a very unpredictable and fragile uh, uh, situation in uh, Ukraine. Uh, but there is absolutely the possibility that this war will drag on and last for months and years. The White House is also announcing a new proposal targeting Russian elites by seizing their assets and tightening sanctions. When the oligarchs' assets are sold off, funds can be used directly to remedy the harm Russia caused in their help and help build Ukraine. Russia, meanwhile, is slamming the West, pointing to their support of Ukraine as the reason why the war is dragging on. This criminal activity of Ukraine against Russia cannot be unpunished. The White House says the new package for Ukraine is intended to last until September 30th. In Washington, Malda Rivera, Fox News. Have a drink and help out the people of Ukraine thanks to Anheuser-Busch's latest brew. The American brewery is bringing one of Ukraine's most popular beers to the states. Starting next month, the beer company known for Budweiser, Rolling Rock, Michelob and more will create its own take on Ukraine's Chernivtsi. The beverage will be produced at the Anheuser-Busch facility in Newark, New Jersey and sold on tap in Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, Houston and Phoenix. All profits from the brew will go toward the CARE Ukraine Crisis Fund, providing humanitarian relief to the people impacted by the Russian invasion. United is making changes to its cancellation policy. Travelers flying basic economy can now cancel their tickets without losing all their funds. There will be a fee of $49.50 to cancel one-way domestic flights and $99 for domestic round-trip journeys. For international trips, the cancellation fee effectively doubles to $99.50 for one-way and $199 for round-trip. A cancellation actually doesn't equal a refund, though. Those who cancel a trip will receive a flight credit equivalent to their ticket cost minus the fee. This furry friend might be smarter than the average bear. New York State Department of Environmental Conservation officials posted a video on Facebook of this bear hoping to walk right in a house if he could only get in. The bear manages to open the screen door but then gives up on the main door. The post featured a line from Jurassic Park of the characters feeling safe from two prehistoric raptors. Unless they figure out how to open doors. Meteorologist Alyssa Triplett is in next with your forecast. And later, how a group is connecting shelter dogs with veterans to help them both. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, that high pressure system cleared out those skies. We stayed under the bright blue conditions, but they were frigid at times. We saw feel like temperatures for much of the day stay into the 30s and 40s as we just touched about 50 degrees for a high temperature. And we had some drier air that is causing for some fire concerns across the state. But overall, we'll focus on the cold start you're going to have tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. You're waking up feeling like 8 degrees. That is brisk with a wind and watching your actual temperatures fall into the 20s widespread across the area. Looking at 25 in Elmira, 23 in Corning, 25 in Wayland. Even Binghamton has a chance at 27 degrees and that has the chance to not only feel frigid and be well below average, but could be record breaking across the state as even Elmira's record is about 21 degrees set back in 1972. So 50 year record there that could be broken as we stay under those clear and quiet skies. Now, still a little breezy for your uh, Friday, and that is going to continue some of those fire concerns as dew points.
points are sitting into the teens, which is a really, really dry air mass for this time of the year. So note that no sparking is no, just don't do it because spreading can be happening way too quickly. You do not want to be the one that starts that fire. So we will, though, talk about some rainy weather after a quiet weekend to return as we step into your Monday forecast. So enjoy the quiet weather. High pressure system will be in place. We are seeing that we're more in that northwesterly wind side of that high pressure system, at least for your Friday. That high is going to continue to drift off. So by Saturday, we'll watch that across portions of New York, which is going to bring calmer winds, reduce that fire risk and allow for not as brisk conditions. Temperatures will be on a warming trend. So we're starting off again into the 20s, but look at the rebounds. We're back up to about 49 by uh, noon, but also note that you still have that north northwesterly wind at place 13 miles per hour. So 49 for this time of the year is going to more feel like the lower 40s, even the 30s in some locations, but we should at least touch the mid 50s. Sunshine is at a higher sun angle this time of the year, so we see that warming occur pretty quickly. 58 into Elmira for a high tomorrow, so just about 5 to 10 degrees below average, a little cooler with that wind as we are looking at peak wind gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. So calming, but still strong in places. And then we'll step into your Saturday with even warmer temperatures. 61 on the board, looking at closer to average for this time of the year. Still some cooler mornings, but not at least looking at nearing any records, just some brisk conditions to watch for. And everybody is looking to have a chance to hit those 60s, a few upper 50s as you head towards the Finger Lake region. But we trend to see that any warming you have this weekend, take advantage of because the temperature outlook for the 5th through the 11th does show below average conditions for much of Pennsylvania, New York, all the way up New England into the Northeast. So cool air will return and we are looking at at least the start of next week to have some of those upper 60s possible, but then storm chances will rumble through the area, cause for some showers and cooler temperatures into later parts of next week. Teachers in Las Vegas taking safety into their own hands by taking self-defense classes. This comes after several incidents of violence at Clark County Schools. Lauren Martinez has more. There's such a need that three local martial arts studios are offering self-defense classes for CCSD teachers and charter school employees. I don't want to fight! Kids are learning self-defense techniques, but pretty soon teachers will be hitting the mat too. A recent rise of school violence has pushed teachers and staff to rally outside of Clark County School District headquarters. Tara Cox, the owner of Legacy Martial Arts Studio in Henderson, thought it would be helpful to offer self-defense classes. So I just put feelers out and the response was huge. Just over 40 teachers and staff filled up their first class that now they're offering a second one go over maybe a few different scenarios that they could be faced with and to help them like diffuse the situation. If we can help it to maybe even cut it off at the past before it reaches a violent situation and then give them tools to help them even if it did reach that that level. And they're not the only studio. Lisa Kai owns Samurai Training Center off Mountain Vista and will be holding a class this Saturday. Distance awareness. A lot of times when there's a confrontation, um, they're not managing the distance well. They allow people to come within their private space. Sakai says jujitsu is about control over the attacker without injuring them. It's not a bunch of big muscle heads out there throwing people around, but really we teach here jujitsu the way it was taught way back in the day as a martial art. Jujitsu in English means the gentle art. Each one of these studios offering these self-defense classes are offering them for free. A bump in users at Twitter and Facebook. Crowds are trickling back to movie theaters, and Tropicana is turning a breakfast staple upside down. CJ Papa has today's business briefs. New numbers out from Twitter, which is in the process of being acquired by Elon Musk. The social media platform reporting 229 million users in its first quarter earnings report, more than expected. Meanwhile, Meta Platform's parent of Facebook surprised Wall Street by adding subscribers in the recent quarter. Its daily active users rose to 1.96 billion after declining in the December quarter. While well, Walmart Plus customers may be getting a discount of up to 10 cents on every gallon of fuel they purchase, but don't expect Costco to follow. Lipow Oil Associates President Adam Lipow telling Fox Business the company already offers discounts on gas and its members earn cash back rewards at Costco fuel pumps. And movie studios are just starting to release major films at pre-pandemic pace again, but it could be another three years before crowds return to theaters 
AMC CEO Adam Aaron says by 2024, theaters will start making close to what they did in 2019, but they'll need to be flexible to survive. The film business was battered by the pandemic. About 2% of domestic movie screens, roughly 800, permanently went dark after some theaters ran out of cash during lockdowns. Finally, Tropicana looking to revolutionize your breakfast routine. The company is taking out milk with cereal and replacing it with orange juice. The juice giant has created a new cereal called Tropicana Crunch. It says the honey almond flavored cereal will pair perfectly with your orange juice in the morning. The cereal will be available starting next week. For more stories, log on to foxbusiness.com. An organization is working to help veterans by training shelter dogs to become service dogs for veterans in need. Danielle Miller has more. Nationally, we've got about 800, close to 800 warrior canine teams that have graduated from our program. The organization Canines for Warriors originated in Florida, and now it's here in the Valley. We rescue dogs from high kill shelters, and we train them to be service dogs for military veterans with post-traumatic stress, military sexual trauma, or traumatic brain injury. In partnership with Heidi's Place, the organization will keep shelter dogs here at their facility and train them to be paired with veterans. Jada is Arizona's first dog to join the program. We've got 21 kennels over here now. Sooner or later we're going to have this entire building. We'll have about 44 kennels and then we hope to either buy or build a place for the warriors to train with their service dogs. The organization is now hoping to change the lives of local veterans and shelter pups like Jada. You hear these warriors every day talk about how they are able to reintegrate back with their families. They're able to go to their sons and daughters football, baseball games, graduations. A lot of them go back to school themselves. A softball player in Kansas has to play the game a little differently than most, but she spent her whole life working and adapting, and she still finds a way to help her team. Danny Turzer has the story. Carly Myers doesn't let anything stop her from going after what she wants. Everything that I thought I couldn't do, I just figured something out. Carly is a really neat kid. She's amazing. She's probably one of the happiest kids I've ever known. Um, what she's able to do even with the limitations that she has is truly amazing. I shouldn't even say limited, to be honest with you, because it doesn't seem to limit her that much. I choke up a little bit towards the middle so that I have more control because over down here, it's not as easy to control. And I just, I just swing like that. <laughs> Myers plays outfield for the Cherryvale Chargers. She was born with one arm. I just adapted as I grew up. My biggest difficulty, I would say, just seeing how other people do everything, I had to know like, I'm going to have to learn to do things different and adjust in my own way. There was one uh, trial and error where I would catch the ball and toss it up in the air a little bit and flip, throw my glove down on the ground and then catch the ball and throw it. <laughs> but one time when I was going to do that, the ball came back and hit me in the face. So I never did that again. So it was time to adapt. She has it timed where she can catch a fly ball, drop the glove, and immediately make the throw in that. It's truly amazing to watch. It's not always easy, but Myers says staying positive is just part of her personality. She's out there. She's trying every day. She's doing anything that's being asked. She always has a, has a smile on her face. She truly is positive. I just told myself to try again. Like, you'll do better next time. I definitely think I could improve more. There's always room for improvement, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. It's the most unwonderful time of the year for some when the beauty of spring comes with allergies. Pollen counts are on the rise, with some places around the country hitting higher pollen counts than normal. Peak time is hitting places like Florida, North Carolina, California's Northern Bay Area, and Atlanta, with itching, sneezing, and congestion bringing on seasonal misery. One allergy specialist has a tip. If you're a sufferer, start meds just before peak season hits to help. If they can start a week before and religiously take their medicine, they will have a dramatic improvement when it really hits. Your peak allergy season depends on where you live, with warmer areas peaking sooner. And allergists say if your symptoms are nonstop day and night, see your doctor. We want to leave you with a smile, and probably a very big smile if you're related to the person we're talking about, because a winner emerges in the massive Powerball drawing worth hundreds of millions. Powerball's website says one ticket holder in Arizona has hit Powerball's jackpot of more than $473 million. Powerball's winning numbers were 
11, 36, 61, 62, 68, and Powerball 4. No one had won the drawing since February 14th, when a single ticket holder won $185.3 million. It's not yet known who won this jackpot. The winner can be paid over 29 years or take a $283 million cash option. That sounds pretty good. From our whole team, thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great rest of your day.